Hi guys, I hope I'm not scaring you guys off of your pants or anything with my bare face. Uh, yes, I'm a human being and yes, I'm going to be a more presentable human being as I move on. So today I'm doing my uh, first impressions with Hourglass Immaculate Liquid Powder Foundation. I got it about two months ago or maybe three. I mentioned it in my Sephora haul video, uh, but I forced myself not to use it until I do this video, so here I am. So this is what the foundation looks like when you first open the box. I love that the pump and the actual container comes separately like this. I feel a lot more sanitary and hygienic this way. It came in a very reflective box, very luxurious looking. It says on the box that it is good for 12 months once you open the product, but it doesn't say when it was made. So um, I pretty much looked everywhere, like in the box, outside the box, um, just around the product, on the bottom of the product. There are some numbers that are stamped. It says like N3141A, but that doesn't really mean anything. So um, for a big company like Hourglass, I mean, that's a bummer. I think all cosmetic companies should be obligated to state either production date or expiration date um, on a very, very noticeable spot, like say in the middle of the packaging, like on the box, like stop using this when it becomes 2015. So now I'm going to look at their claims on Sephora website. So they say that this high-tech foundation incorporates cashmere, kaolinite clay, don't have any idea what kaolinite is, but that must be a good thing, which offers exceptional oil absorption, absorbing 75% of its weight in sebum while retaining the skin's natural moisture. The oil-free, humidity-free, and water-resistance formula transforms instantly from liquid to powder, creating an all-day finish that camouflages imperfections and never looks dull or flat. Okay, that's really, really good to hear, actually, because um, the weather is warming up. We're almost getting towards, like, summer. Summer is definitely around the corner. And if you're living in Korea or anywhere in Southeast Asia, you know how humidity can be a bitch. I know, like especially in summer, humidity here is just crazy. It frustrates you. It not only challenges your makeup, it challenges your temper. So every time uh, when it gets summer, I feel so short-fused. I get angry really easily so uh, yeah if they stick to their claims this must be a perfect foundation so they have 16 different shades on their sephora website and i opted for this shade called shell we don't have sephora we don't have hourglass here in seoul so uh, i looked it up on google searching for some reviews and there were some uh, people who have similar skin tone as i do so uh, i got shell I absolutely have no idea how that's gonna fit me, but let's just try. Okay, so today I am going to use this um, Etreat House Face Conditioning Cream. I really love this primer. And then I'm gonna fill in my pores with this um, Volcanic Clay Double Glow Photoshop Cream from uh, the Face Shop. I really, really love these two stuff. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, let me just... Pin back my hair. All right. So first I'm gonna put a very, very thin layer of this primer. It's got SPF 25, so uh, this is the perfect primer for this transitioning season because definitely when it becomes summer, I'm going to have uh, higher SPF. I have a ridiculously enormous size of pores on my nose, on my inner cheeks, and then on my unibrow area. I'm going to fill that in with this Photoshop cream from the Face Shop. I'm going to use a really, really small amount, like really, really just enough to cover that area. And of course, a very, very thin layer. Just spread it out. Let's try this foundation. Okay, so it smells like a um, foundation, but it smells a little plasticky. Yeah, but not bad. All right. 
Okay, there's this pump. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it took 11 pumps to get the first product out. Okay. This could be a little light for my skin tone. Could be not. I washed all my brushes yesterday, so my Sigma F84 is nice and clean. Okay. A little light for my skin, but it'll do. Because I'm going to wear like, you know, powder and then like bronzers and stuff. So uh, yeah, I can make it work. It feels really smooth and very thin. It's, it doesn't cake up at all. Hmm. It feels good. It's definitely like light to medium coverage, I feel like. Yeah. I'm gonna get some more. So this is a one pump. I've got some uh, redness going on around my cheeks and under my chin. So I just finished putting on two thin layers of the foundation and I must say that it feels really really light and natural. I feel like I'm not wearing anything at all. And uh, the color shell, it definitely suits my skin tone. I don't you know, see any uh, bizarre line between my neck and my face. It's not too dark or too light for my skin tone. So if you're anywhere um, around like NC20 or 25, I think Shell uh, will be the perfect uh, shade for you. But um, like it's, it's a bit patchy, like the foundation applies a little patchy. Like I see some patchiness here and here. As soon as it touches your skin, it turns into a powdery finish. So you really, really have to blend in, kind of swirl it around to make sure that uh, you have no spots that you are missing. So I'm going to touch up a little more on my cheek area and then I'm, and then I'm going to do um, some concealing because my redness is definitely uh, peeping through. So uh, yeah, since it's a really light coverage, that's to be expected. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do my eye makeup and then I'll come back. So I look more like a girl now, right? <laughs> um, as much as I hate to say this, I must say that I do not like this foundation already and it's only been like what 10 to 15 minutes. I didn't know it because I was doing uh, the foundation like this but while I was doing my eye makeup I took a closer look and I was like no because literally all this foundation is stuck on every single pore I have so I have major disgusting stuff going on on here and it's a lot better here but especially on this area and especially on top of my nose where majority of my pores are clustered it's just oh, it's just so horrible I don't like it like you can obviously see every single pore you have you know you know what I'm talking about right if you have like many pores like any kind of liquid when it goes on top of your pore the pore just kind of peeks out and I'm like I'm here this is definitely doing that, yeah. And also, like I told you guys before, it's so easy to make it patchy because the foundation is not all liquid, it turns into powder. You have little time to blend, and then when it's blended, it doesn't have that flawless look. Oh, such a shame. Oh my god, there goes my $55. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? Yeah, but I'll still test it out. Like now it's, um, what time is it? It's um, 2.33 p.m. I'm going to show you guys. It's, um, come on, 2.33 p.m. I'm going to come back in about a couple of hours or maybe like five hours. I don't know. I'll keep you updated. 
Hey guys, so it's now 10.22 p.m. So it's been about like 8 hours. I tried to come back sooner, but I was caught up at dinner with my sister. We had a lot to catch up, so that took extra long. But that also gave me a uh, maximum period of time to test this foundation. Alright, so um, I definitely see um, patchiness and unevenness on both sides of my cheeks right over here. It's definitely uneven, um, I don't like it. And also on my T-zone and my inner cheek area, super oily, like it's shiny, oily, greasy, you name it. And the thing I really don't like about it is that it makes my pores looking extra large and extra saggy. So my pores over here especially, they're like crying. Pores are like, Ooh. so instead of like this, they're like all like sagging and that's so ugly. Yeah, um, well, in terms of uh, the shade, the color fit, it definitely suits my skin tone. Uh, what's the name of this color? It's Shell. But it definitely has oxidized on my face, so my um, entire complexion is looking dull and very unfresh. So, uh, well, that's... That's, that happens a lot with a lot of foundations. I mean, oxidizing is something that's expected to happen, but this one is, isn't like, I don't like it. Uh, no. So, yeah. As much as I like to say that I like it, I don't because, I don't know, I just... Maybe it's, the, okay, maybe it's the brush or maybe it's the foundation, but this brush, it's um, Sigma F84. It has never, have ever failed on me with any kind of foundation, BB cream, CC cream, but it failed. So it's either the brush or the foundation and I blame the foundation. So I'll, you know, probably try to um, use it with other tools like my finger or um, beauty blender or that, you know, air puff. But so far, uh, as far as you apply it with this brush, it doesn't, it doesn't give you that flawless, beautiful looking skin. It just it makes your skin look like a grease ball and uh, you definitely need some powder to top it. And uh, my skin is combination, uh, somewhat oily on the T-zone area and uh, not a fan, no, not at all. I, I don't want to recommend it to anybody. I know, I, I hope it doesn't sound mean. Um, yeah, but uh, for my first impressions, I am kind of disappointed in this product. I don't get my $55 worth uh, with this kind of quality, no. So I'm kind of disappointed, but I'll try a little more, uh, see if I like it. And if I change my mind, I'll definitely let you guys know in my next or next next uh, video. But yeah, that's my first impressions with um, Immaculate liquid powder foundation from Hourglass. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope, you, hope it was somewhat helpful. And I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye!